right, welcome to Fall City. You guys can go ahead and stand. a great New Year's. I'm excited for this year, and hopefully this is the year where things start to gradually get better. I know it's not just going to all get better like that, but I'm hopeful 
That's my word for this year is hopeful. Um, so welcome to Fall City. We are glad you're with us this morning. If you're joining us online, we are glad you're here with us in that way too. We're starting a new series today in our new year called I'm In. So Timmy's going to bring, I'm sure, what's going to be an interesting series as usual. It's never boring. I can say that. Um, but if you're joining us online, remember to like and share. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Um, so for those of you guys here, we're going to have a time for um, communion like normal. You're going to go back when that time comes like we've been doing, social distancing, and as well as offering too. There's a basket back there where you can place that. Um, so there will be a 15-minute devotional after our service for our high school-aged kids, so don't forget that. That's also with Timmy. Our nursery is open if you have small children. Um, and then children's ministry, of course, um, is across the hall. Lindsay does a great job with that. So next week, um, this is important, we are having a special I'm in meeting in addition to our normal service. So we would like to invite you, in, oh my gosh, invite you to our Fall City Vision meeting. So it's going to be next Sunday, January 10th. It's going to be here, right here at Venture Out, and it's going to be at 5 o'clock. So this is, we really encourage you guys to come because we are, you know, trying to plan out a vision for our church and, you know, we want your input and what you want to see because you guys are here and important and it's we really want to kind of hear what you guys have to say, what direction you guys want to go in. So join us next Sunday, January 10th at 5 at the Venture Out so you can um, put your input in and I'm sure it'll be fun. Bring your ideas. Uh, I was going to, I was thinking that too. I was like, I wonder if there'll be food. There'll be food. Yay. So that's, even, yeah, exactly. So that's even more reason to come. There will be food. If all else, come for free food. That's what I do. So, um, just kidding. Uh, all right. We did communion. There's also back table for offering. Oh, also, if you want to give online, um, you can text your amount to 84321. Um, so we don't have bulletins today, but please talk to one of our leadership team. You can find Quentin, Adam, Timmy. Um, if you have anything you need, if you have suggestions, if you, you want to be a part of the church, um, just find one of them, let us know. And uh, I think that's all. There was a lot, of, a lot of messages there, but I think I covered it all. So with that, we're going to continue with our worship set.
all can have a seat. During the Last Supper, Jesus passed the cup around. The cup, Jesus said, represented his blood. I think sometimes we don't we don't really understand what Jesus meant by that. And to explain a little bit and kind of paint a picture for you, I'm going to kind of enter you into a conversation that my wife and I had, and she's way more of a nerd than I am, and she just happens to be a nurse. So she really wanted to know, like, what was going on? Like, what in Jesus' body was happening through this? And see, the Romans, they, they were experts. Experts at inflicting pain and killing people. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. And they have developed a pattern that was extremely effective. So see, the first thing they did was they would strap, they would have a strap or a whip and it would be basically leather straps and they would tie, be tied together to where something that you could hold on to and make a handle. And on each of the individual straps, they would tie bone in and glass and rock and stone and even iron. And see, Jesus got 40 minus one. But why is it called 40 minus one? Because the Romans had figured it out that if they whipped you 40 times with this, the chances of you dying were good. So they strapped Jesus to a pole above his head to expose his back and to expose all of his inner organs. And he received 39 lashings from this. Experts that look back at times like this even talk about instances where someone had been whipped so hard and so violently that the whips had lashed all the way across and spilled their guts out in the middle of the yard. Experts have looked back at this. Doctors have, have wrote multiple, multiple writings about how Jesus actually died. And what they figured out is that he actually, he actually died of shock. See, while hanging on the cross, fully exposed to the elements, he was bleeding. He was bleeding out by all the open wounds that were on his back and on his sides, and even on his head. that he couldn't breathe. All of the shock to his system was all going to his core. And when you have your arms spread out like this and you can't pull yourself up, you're hanging. And when you hang, your diaphragm raises up and it pushes on your lungs and you can only, you can only take short breaths. So when Jesus is communicating to his disciples, this is what he's talking about. We can see this. And I think we lose it. I think we lose what it means that Jesus handed his blood. This is graphic. This is exactly what it was meant to be. This is exactly what it took to pay the sins of the world. And this is exactly what Jesus was willing to do for all of us. So every week we take time to explore this. We take time to remember this. This pain. This excruciating pain. That would be the reason that we could spend our life with Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you were willing to sacrifice for us.
Father, we thank you for the opportunity to just be in your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to just experience Jesus. We ask that Jesus fills every heart in this room. And we ask that we are able to reflect on that day. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
just thank you so much for all the good you've done in this past year, even through the, the hard times, God, you've shown that you're still here. And I just thank you so much that you're going to continue to be with us in this new year. And I ask that you'd be with this church and this town and this community, God, and just this world throughout this new year, that there would be hope in God, that there would be peace. And I just thank you and praise you for all that you are. And I ask that you'd be with Timmy as he brings your message this morning. It's in your beautiful name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Good morning. Morgan just looked at me super awkwardly. I don't know what's going on. Should probably try coming to church sometime. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, she didn't know that because she's the one that spearheads our nursery program. So a lot of times she's in the nursery. So she didn't get to see me in all of this glory right here every Sunday. So, um, Hey, uh, just before I get started, I want to kind of recap uh, what the plans are for next week. So next week, which is actually January 10th and not July 10th, um, we are going to meet here at, um, at 5 p.m. There's going to be food, and we are going to uh, just kind of talk about uh, where we've been, where we're at, and what our next steps are, and kind of what it takes to get there. Does that make sense? Um, but the thing about it is, is uh, we have a leadership team that does a great job and anything really that you see happening around here happens because of the volunteers and uh, the leadership team kind of setting things in order, all right? Um, but it's important for us, for you guys to be involved too. And um, we want to know what kind of environments to create, what kind of um, topics we're supposed to address, because uh, one thing that's important to me as the pastor here is we want to be uh, useful, right? There are a lot of, there are a lot of um, churches, a lot of congregations that kind of settle into this pocket of just doing the same crap over and over again, and it, it, they're so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. And so we want to be useful. And uh, how that comes about is because we uh, get together and we have a conversation and we talk about the real crap that's going on. And then we address that uh, from a scriptural point of view so that we can hear how God speaks into our life. So that's what's happening next Sunday night. I hope that you're here. If you're, a if you're out in Facebook Landia, please come. We'd love to have you. Um, it's important to us that uh, the people of our congregation aren't just members, but they take these next steps and become owners of what we're doing here. So uh, we're in uh, the first sermon of a series called I'm In. So uh, what, what better way to kick off the new year than with some resolve, right? And so we're going to talk about I'm In. And I hope everyone had a wonderful and safe holiday season. I did. It was awesome. It was different this past year. Um, it seemed like it was a little slower, and I'm, I'm cool with that. Like, I'm okay with that. It was nice to sit around and binge watch stuff on Netflix. It was super nice, but enough about last year, um, because we're not the kind of people to get hung up on the past, okay? We don't, we don't do that. We, we look forward. So it's 2021. Can you believe that? I remember this time last year, um, I was all excited about the roaring 20s, and then And then Rona hit. So, um, but it's 2021, not to mention it's January 2021, right? And so we all kind of get to do the hashtag new year, new me thing. Yeah? Anybody? Hashtag new year, new me. Uh, for about two and a half weeks, right? Until life hits us in the face with a can of twisted tea. <laughs> and uh, we fall off the radar for a few weeks because we're embarrassed. And then, boom, we're back to normal, right? Whatever normal is nowadays. Actually, I'm just playing. Um, I know we make fun of the new year, new me people. But um, if anyone, listen, if anyone is taking steps right now to adjust their life in order to become a better version of themselves, then I'm in your corner. Like, I am your fan. I support that. I want to encourage that. I want to equip that. I believe that resolve is a good thing to have. 
That's why I wanted to start with this series this year. Resolve is a good thing to have, and we all need to be working on next steps, right? We all need to be working on next steps. So toward the end of last year, I was struggling, or yeah, last year. Last year was just a couple weeks ago. Um, a week ago. Dang. Um, toward the end of last year, I was struggling to figure out, like, what am I going to kick the year off with? Like, what kind of series? What kind of message? How can I encourage? How can I equip? And I came across a sermon series from another church called I'm In. Now, I didn't listen to it. I just kind of stole their graphics. Uh, but... <laughs> But I saw it, and I was like, that's a, that's a good topic. Like, I could, I could get behind that. So um, as I thought about the phrase, I realized um, that it's probably a good thing to explore. Like, what does it take to be in? What does it take to be involved? What does it, what does it take to commit and have that resolve to say, okay, I'm stepping out. I'm going to take this next step. And I realized it's, it's a good thing to explore, especially as people... Uh, are in this mindset of making changes in their lives, this whole new year, new me thing, right? So we're going to take uh, the next several weeks, and we're going to discuss different ways that you are in or that you can be in this year, okay? We're going to discuss several things. So this week, I wanted to talk about how you are invited. You're invited, I, that sounds silly to have to say that you're invited because you're sitting here, but I've walked into churches before and felt like I wasn't invited. Did you guys hear my knee pop? I just almost went down in front of all you. Um, anyways, it, it, I've walked into churches and not felt invited. Like I've been there and I've sang next to people and I've given my offerings and I've, and I've raised my hands and, I and I've not felt invited. And that's something that's important to me is for people to know that they are invited. We want you here. Not just to fill seats, but we want you here. Now, and I want to get this straight. This isn't just about coming to church. It's not just about coming. Whoa there, lighten me up, Right? This isn't just about coming to church, um, although some of it is. This is about who you are and who you're becoming. It's about who you are and who you're becoming. That being said, though, when you surround, who you surround yourself with has, it says a lot about who you are and who you're becoming, right? So coming to church is a very good step to take because you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people who want to take next steps who want to step into the gospel, right? So it's a good first step to take. And Jesus gives us an invitation that I feel is very kind of pertinent to our lives, pertinent to our struggles, our current situations and mindset. It's in uh, Matthew chapter 11. He says this. Um, it says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Now, we've read that verse a lot. I've quoted that verse a lot. Maybe not its in entirety, but I love this passage. I find it encouraging. And who doesn't need encouragement right now? Who doesn't need encouragement after 2020 and stepping into a new year where you've resolved that things are going to be different? So I find it encouraging. He says, come to me all who are weary and, and carry heavy burdens. That's like a, it's kind of like a, a double whammy. First he says, come to me all. You know what all means? Everyone. Like all. It means all. It's He doesn't mince words here. He just says, come to me all who are weary and carry heavy burdens. So the first thing we need to know is we are invited to relationship. We are invited to relationship, not to religion, okay? Not to self-help, but we are invited to relationship. There is something about the first part of this statement in this verse that just, it rocks me a little bit. He says, come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens. The, that sentence alone, it kind of blows my mind. Because we're talking about the perfect here. We're talking about Jesus here. We're talking about our creator, the one, it says, it says in the beginning, was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. 
everything was created through him in the beginning, right? So he's our creator. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And he still says, come, come on. Do you know anyone right now who isn't weary or doesn't have heavy burdens? Me neither. Everybody's got something that they're wrestling with. Everybody's got something that they're, that, they're, that they're kind of grappling with and rolling around with, trying to figure it out. I don't know anybody who doesn't deal with that. So that pretty much covers all. Come to me all who have heavy burdens, right, who are weary. Well, that's pretty much everybody. Then, the sent- then in the sentence he says, bring your mess. Bring it. Like, bring your mess, I will get it sorted out. He doesn't say, clean yourself up and then come talk to me. You know, my my little baby, Hudson, he just turned 10 years old, double digits, breaking my heart, just killing me, right? I can remember back in the days when he was a baby, he had these these, uh, chubby cheeks and he would smile and he had like a two-week period where he looked just like George W. Bush. It was awesome. <laughs> We've got pictures. It was awesome. But the funny thing about babies is they poop their pants. They do. I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> Maybe some adults do. I don't know. But I know babies poop their pants. And as a dad, whenever my son made a mess, he knew who to come to. He, he would come to me. And he'd hold his hands up, and he would smell terrible, and I would flick him in the forehead and say, go clean yourself up, then you can come talk to me. Right? No, that's not what I've done. I didn't say, all right, let's clean this mess up together. I said, no, I'll get everything, and I'll clean it up. That's what Jesus said. He says, come to me, all who are weary, and and carry heavy burdens, and I, I will give you rest. He doesn't say, I will show you a way to figure out rest. He says, I will give you rest. Now, let me ask, how many of you um, have friends that you can bring your mess to? Elizabeth, don't lie, you're in church. You don't have friends. Um, How many of you guys have friends that you can bring your mess to? Yeah? Why? Why do you bring it to them? Because you trust them? Because you have a relationship with them. You don't just bring your mess to anyone, right? You don't just walk down the road and you're like, oh, that looks like a nice person. Let me vomit my life onto them. No. It has to be somebody that you're in relationship with. Somebody that you have a relationship. And even at that, we don't typically bring all our mess, right? Because if I brought all my mess to somebody, that would scare everyone off, right? Right? And so we bring our mess to to people that we are in relationship with. And Jesus says that. He invites us. He says, come to me. Bring me your mess. I invite you to be in a a relationship with me. He says, bring it. I'm not afraid of it. I have power over it. And I'll bear the brunt of the load for you. He invites. And I want you to listen to this. Because this jacks with me a little bit. He invites the most jacked up version of yourself into a relationship. Like, I want you to think about that. Like the most messed up, jacked up, sideways version of yourself. And Jesus says, come to me and bring that. And then he bears the weight of it for you. It reminds me of a story in the New Testament. Um, like, when we talked about messed up, all right, like, I know you guys had stuff flashing through your head, like the most jacked up version of yourself. And some of y'all, I, I'm sure, have been pretty jacked up. I mean, just looking at you, I can tell, all right? But it doesn't get any more messed up than dead, all right? Like, you've been a lot of things, but you ain't been dead, right? Right? So I'm going to set this story up. So there's this, this family, um, this group of siblings that are friends with Jesus, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, all right? And Lazarus uh, is messed up, more messed up than he's ever been in his life because he's dead, okay? 
And Jesus finally comes because they had sent for him and said, Lazarus is sick. He's like, nah, it'll be all right. He's going to be used for the Lord's work, all right? So he comes up, and, and, and Mary says, if you'd have just been here, he wouldn't have died. And he gets a little farther, and Martha, which one did I say first? Anyway, either way, the other one says, if you'd have just been here, he wouldn't have died. And he goes, and he's standing at this grave, at this tomb. And this is what happens. Jesus says, roll, roll the stone aside. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested. Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Think about that. That's a little gross. That's messed up. That's worse than dead. Like dead and smelly is worse than dead, right? And Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and he said, Father, um, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out and his hands and feet uh, bound in grave clothes. His face wrapped in, in a head cloth. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Like, it doesn't get more messed up than being in a tomb for four days with your flesh rotting. I know that sounds graphic, but I want you to think about that. And Jesus walks up to the tomb, and he says, roll the stone away. And he says, come on. Come to me. Bring your troubles. And he had some troubles. He'd been dead for four days. Martha says, do you not realize what you're dealing with? Do you not realize the smell? Do you not realize the fact that he's been rotting in this cave for four days? Do you not realize the mess that you're about to encounter? Are you sure you want to do this? I don't know about you guys, but that's how I feel sometimes. Like whenever I come to God, I think to myself, I'm a freaking mess. Can, can you do anything with me? Are you, are you sure that you want to deal with this? Do you, do you understand the mess, the stench that you're walking into when you deal with what's going on inside of me and, 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 and the, the, the crap that I produce around me because of that? Do you, do you really want to encounter this? Is, is, or is my problem... Too petty for your glory and power? Or is my issue too terrible for your presence? Can you handle the fact that I'm ADD and I'm just a straight up train wreck so I can start a prayer, fall asleep and wake up and be on a whole different topic when I'm praying to God? Like, how does he deal with that? Sometimes I think, have you heard people say, if I come to church, the building will fall in? Sometimes I think that. Like, this is going to be the time where I say something just stupid enough that this whole thing is going to implode, right? Like, that's how I feel. Do you realize what you're walking into? And what does Jesus say? He speaks to a dead man who's been rotting for four days in a cave, and he says, come to me. In that, there is literally nothing that you can throw at him that he can't handle. I mean, I don't know how much you could get worse than dead and rotting for four days, right? Your relationship, your finances, parenting, all of that stuff, it doesn't seem as bad as dead and rotting for four days. And so he, so he invites you into relationship. He says, come to me. All who are weary, weary and carry heavy burdens. The second part of that is he invited, we've been invited to unload our burdens. Right? We've been invited to unload our burdens. Jesus invites you into a relationship, but then he says, take up my yoke. Now, do you guys know what a yoke is? 
not the yellow part in the middle of an egg. That's a yolk, okay? But a yolk. Now, the best way that I can explain it with my pea brain here is um, it's a primitive agrarian contraption that essentially handcuffs two animals together by their necks, okay? That's what it is, a picture. I got a picture of it, and it's kind of blocked, but you can see, you can see the neck handcuff, okay? If you can see it in there a little bit, it's, um, yeah, there we go. That is, that is a yoke, and Jesus says, take up my yoke. I'll carry the weight, essentially, right? There are a couple things about the yoke that really stands out to me, okay? The first thing is um, a lot of times what would happen is when you got a, a, an itty-bitty cute little baby ox, they partner this ox up with a stronger ox. And this stronger ox pulls more weight. This stronger ox typically is a veteran of the field, and they can, they can plow a straight line, all right? And they, they yoke this baby up to a bigger, stronger ox so that it can carry the weight, so it can walk straight line. And so the only thing that this ox has to do is focus on moving forward. Is focus on taking its next step. That way, no matter how much they, they fight, no matter how much they flail, no matter how much they try to, to get away or just lay down and quit, the stronger ox keeps moving forward. And he does so in a straight line. So when he says, take up my yoke, he's really saying, I will bear the brunt of the work here. You just practice moving forward. You just focus on forward motion. You just take the next step. And the second thing about the ox is, or about the yoke is, I believe that Jesus I believe this dude really knew yokes. And I know that sounds silly to say, but I want you to think about this. He spent about 30 years as a carpenter's apprentice. There's no scriptural kind of background for me thinking this, but I believe that yokes were his specialty. I believe that yokes were the thing that Jesus was probably known for. I bet people came from all over the place to get a yoke made by Jesus for their ox, oxen, that's oxuses, um, it's plural. Um, I believe that, that he understood them. I, I picture him walking past this, this ox and, and, and studying the ox and running his hand along the neck and the shoulders to find the, the points of potential friction. I believe that he would make a yoke that would be effective and useful and wouldn't rub the wrong ways so that this ox can both move forward, get its work done, and have a younger, kind of greener ox, not green the color, but kind of new ox um, walking beside him. I believe that when he says, come to me and take up my yoke, he knows better than anyone what that means. That's why taking up his yoke is the only way that our burdens will actually be taken care of. Because he's the only one that can possibly carry them all. He's the only one that can simultaneously bear the weight of our selfishness and stupidity, okay? Keep us moving forward and knowing that we have him beside us the whole time. And when that happens, we are invited to move forward. Like, isn't that what we want? Don't we want to move forward? Don't we want to take next steps in our life? We will take next steps with greater ease because we are yoked to Jesus. He says, my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. Imagine, imagine the ability to walk through your life with a little bounce in your step, with a little lighter step, with a a little more confidence and a little less self-doubt. Imagine that. 
Like sometimes that just sounds so freaking foreign to me to be able to walk in self-confidence and less self-doubt. It sounds nice. And Jesus invites us to do this. There are, there are things in this world that will weigh you down and tie you up. Little things, big things, insignificant things, things that feel like they are just going to crush you under its weight. And, and when that happens, you aren't able to, to move forward with a full stride, right? In, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a, a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. He bore the weight of our sins, disregarding its shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all, all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. This passage has always been encouraging to me because it, it reminds me to take bigger strides, to take bigger chances, bigger steps, and focus forward, to keep my eyes on who God is, because whenever I keep my eyes on who God is, then I know who I am. This comes directly after chapter 11. Chapter 12 generally does. I think it's numbers and stuff. I don't know. But chapter 11 in Hebrews is, is called the Hall of Faith. And it talks about the men and women who were able to be a part of great things that God had done because of their willingness to yoke up, if you will. Because of their willingness to, to come to God and to be yoked beside him and to move forward and take bigger steps. You want to know why they can take bigger steps? Because they know God's got them. A lot of Old Testament stories begin with, with someone's resolve to trust in God and his ability to make good of what was once a mess. As we moved into the new covenant, Jesus became the one who bore the mess. He bore it on his shoulders, just like a yoke. And we're, we're a part of the great things that he has done, is doing, and will do. But this doesn't happen for you if you aren't resolved to respond to the invitation, come to me. It doesn't happen for you. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Right? So when he says, come to me, he's going to carry you to the Father, the Creator. When we do this, the weight is transferred, and we're able to free our stride and concentrate on moving forward. It reminds me of a, a wonderful time in my life. Seventh grade, 1992-ish. My fugly stage, okay, my feet were big and I was skinny. I was at South Ripley. It was the, the first year that we could try out for sports. The seventh grade was the first year you got to try out for sports, right? And so I played, uh, I ran cross country and I, I played basketball and then uh, this was track season, so it was spring. I'm excited. Made the track team. I think everybody made the track team. I don't know if they cut anybody, but I made the track team, right? And one of the coolest things in seventh grade is getting your uniform, right? A little short shorts, a little skinny tank top. If it's too cold, look like you're going to cut right through the front of that shirt, Right? But the thing, about, the thing about these uniforms is they were always hand-me-down uniforms, right? They were always hand-me-down from varsity and junior varsity. And so what happens is in the shorts, the elastic is stretched out. And I weigh like 110 pounds. And so, I, of course, I got my, my McDavid undershorts. You guys remember those? Pull my shorts up, let them go, and they drop to my ankles. But... My mom was awesome. 
She had a big safety pin, so you just fold them over and tuck them right there, right? Good to go. <laughs> You're good to go, right? And so here we are running. It was the four by 100 relay. I take off. The pin busts loose. What happens? Down to my ankles. And now I'm doing the penguin walk, and I ain't running nothing. It's like, you know what I'm talking about, the penguin walk. And I had a choice to make. What was I going to do? Was I going to stop and take all the time to fold it back over and pin it and all that stuff, right? Nope. I just stepped out of those suckers and kept going. No more penguin walk for me. I had a free stride, right? I had a race to finish. I had, I had three other people on my relay team that were counting on me. They, they wanted to win. They didn't care whether I had pants or not, right? <laughs> I had a race to finish, so I stepped out of what was tangling me up, right? What was trapping me. And I moved forward towards the finish line. I know that sounds silly, but the thing about it is, is a lot of the stuff that we allow to make us penguin walk through life is silly too. It is. A lot of the stuff that we allow to bind us up and trap us and weigh us down, number one, it's silly, but number two, Jesus has already invited us to give him that so that we can walk with a free stride, right? And so we have this, this invitation, not just to church, not just to religion, but to a relationship with Jesus, right? He invites us to come to him for a relationship. And he invites us to unload our burdens as he walks alongside us, carrying the weight of our selfishness and silliness sometimes, right? And then he awards us the opportunity. He invites us to move forward, to take next steps. Not just next steps, but next steps that would be bigger if, if we knew that God had us, right? If we knew that we could take a bigger step and move forward faster and more effectively because we are yoked up to Jesus. And so whenever I say I'm in, it's not just I've decided to come to church. No, I'm invited to be in a relationship with Jesus who is going to bear the weight of my sins and allow me to to live, not just learn how to die, but to live, right? So as we step into this series, I'm in. We've got a lot more, I think, fun stuff, probably a little out there because you know me. Um, but uh, next week, we're going to find out that we are invaluable. We're going we're, we're gonna to know who we are because of whose we are next week. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your willingness to be in a relationship with somebody who is so messed up and be willing to bear the weight of my ignorance sometimes, my silliness, my inconsistencies my sin, my insecurities, and provide an environment and an opportunity for me to move forward, to step further into who it is you created me to be. Father, I pray that for all of us, that we can, that we can be in on that. Help us to, Lord, help us to, to yoke up and walk through this life with confidence in who you are. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys can go ahead and stand.
Sunday and clear your schedule so you can come to that meeting at five for free food. I mean, to talk about our vision. <laughs> <laughs>